Hey guys, good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome, welcome to another live session of Stock Sniper Trading. My name is Dave, guys, my partner is Ron. Let's get down to business here, guys. Jumping in on US 30, sell, okay? I'm jumping in. That, guys, that's a 100 pip drop. It's, yes, we caught it. Hey, guys, 200 pips, please, secure. <laughs> Trading with a perfect broker is the key, which takes you one step ahead. At AFX, we have you covered. The future of Forex is zero commission. Here at AFX, we offer ultra low commission, which starts at 99 cents per lot. Our accounts spreads start from 0.0 pips. With account leverage up to 500x, and can have a minimum deposit of $100, with an additional 100% deposit bonus, regulated by HEMC Greece, compliant with ESMA, EU, regulated with FSEA, South Africa. Nothing to lose, but something to gain. Trade with the world's most liquid market provider, AFX, recommended by Stock Sniper Trading. To get started use the affiliate link below. As a trader, we all look for tight or low spreads, which helps us to get in and out of the market. Using the right broker can help us try different strategies with multiple options of brokers on the web. Here at Stock Sniper Trading, we have a recommended broker that is Hanko Trade with spreads as low as zero pips and leverage up to 500x hanko trade is just one click away with multiple account types to choose from you also have a minimum deposit of ten dollars using hanko trades affiliate program refer a friend and earn up to a 40 percent commission on trading volume built by traders for traders hanko trade Recording in progress. Hey guys, welcome. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Welcome to Stock Sniper Trading. My name is Ron. My partner is Dave, guys. Welcome. It is Tuesday, September 19th. It's 7.30 a.m. Eastern. And we're going to go till uh, just after 10 o'clock. So we're going to go um, watch uh, what is going on through the open of Wall Street. Welcome, everybody. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Everyone on Zoom, I appreciate all of you guys. Welcome. Good morning, Anita, Martin, Tanya. Welcome. Pascal, good morning. Thuzma, good morning. And everybody on YouTube, you guys as well. Thank you guys for joining. We appreciate you guys as well. Thank you, Iliud, Crypto Fox, Safit. Thank you for joining. Appreciate all of you guys. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, so for today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get started with gold. Okay, um, we're going to do a top-down analysis on gold, XAU USD, and we also have gold on bookmap. So if you guys want to watch the live liquidity and the pending orders in the market, and if you guys are learning on how to read a depth of market, then we have it on the right side. And then once we then make the switch over, and then we go into the indices right before. Uh, Wall Street market open. We're going to look at Dow Jones and Nasdaq and then we can uh, switch the depth of market towards the indices. So um, yesterday was a really, really, really slow day in the market. It's normally Mondays are like that, but there was absolutely no news yesterday. So some of you guys made it out with your daily goals, which is amazing. So congratulations. And um, if, if you struggled yesterday in trading, it is a Monday. You got to you got to start to learn the, the how the markets, which days are better to trade than others. But Mondays generally are a slow day in the market. Fridays can be difficult days to trade as well. Um, so normally Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, midweek has nice volume to trade. But this is when we get more into news. Um, so let's take a look before we get started at Forex Factory and uh, just take a look at today's schedule of news, what we have, what we'll be trading into. So right over here, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, 
There is three Canadian folders, red folders, CPI month over month, median CPI year over year, and trim CPI year over year. So if you're trading anything to do with the Canadian dollar, USD CAD, if you're trading, any, any, also if you're trading crude oil, okay, crude will be affected by Canadian red folder news. So if you are trading crude oil, just be aware, come 8.30, there is three red folders, significant folders, high impact, that could um, impact uh, also crude oil if you are trading. And we have some other Canadian folders. Then we get into USD building permits and housing starts. And that's basically what we have today. Normally, like when we come into um, 8.30, we have red USD folders, which will affect like gold and um, indices and things like that. And then also when we get into 9.30 or 9.45 in Wall Street, maybe we have like one red folder for USD. We don't have that today. So it is going to be another... Um, light day in the market. Tomorrow, tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Uh, is FOMC. So we will be doing this live in our Zoom over here. So 2 p.m. tomorrow is the big, big news for the entire week. This is what the, the markets are waiting for. They're waiting for Jay Powell and to see what they're going to do with this federal funds rate right here of 5.5%. Uh, right now, for they're forecasting that they're unchanged. They're going to pause, keep it the same, but we'll see if the actual number comes out, if they do increase it here, maybe a quarter percent. I don't think they're going to do it, but um, uh, we'll see what happens over here. Okay, so let's just move over to gold and um, thank you guys, everyone, for joining. Appreciate all of you guys. And um, so this is how it looks on the five minutes if you are trading. Okay, we can do like a, a quick analysis on the five minutes, but I don't tend, I don't normally do that. I like to do a top down to go over everything to to get it fresh into our minds and no, so we know how it's moving more on a higher time frame. So what I like to do is I like to go to the daily time frame and uh, start from here so we can see that it's building off the bottom right here this bottom when it came down right over here and then mid-august 1885 so we broke 1900 psychological level we came down 1885 and then we had another bullish move come all the way back up to here in the beginning of September and then there was four rejections one two three Four rejections and it's at the psychological block in the market around 1950 and it couldn't break or close above and we got pushed down and then again it came down found some support here around 1915 pulled back up again into 1930 again a lower high and on the daily they pushed it right back down down into here this is um, last Thursday so it came down to roughly about 1900 again and held with a higher low from 1885 and continued to push up Friday we had a big bullish day come all the way up and then we continued with this momentum this week so Monday was bullish on gold let's take a look at how it opened and how it moved so we opened yesterday the beginning of the week small tiny pull back to 1922 we ended up the bulls filling up the prior wicks one two three four these four wicks filled and continued to break for a new high 1935 where we closed right here around 1933 and today continuation open come down bearish test approximately 50 percent of the body so what I like to do, like at the low and the high of the days, I like to put a purple line. Okay, so I'm going to put a purple line right there. That's our low of the day today, 1930 exactly. That was our resistance over here. Okay, for all these days, September 6, resistance, 1930. Over here, September 8, resistance, 1930. September 11, resistance, 1930. Over here, September 15, resistance 1930 now we have our first body yesterday close above 1930 and look at the retest really nice retest came down and respected 1930 as a support level now so we have now new support it's only the first touch but we're going to see over time is this going to build as a major support level so that it can continue to accumulate and maybe take out 1950 uh in in, in maybe 
with news, um, maybe with FOMC, maybe this week, who knows. But it is building right now. If we do get a pullback, we might get pullbacks coming back down into here. So if there is pullbacks, if we cannot hold 1930 here, this area, then we might pull back to this general area right over here, 1923-24. I'm going to place a yellow line right here. And that is a body-to-body -body continuation. You also have rejections right there, rejections right there. Here you have rejection, rejection at this area. So it is a critical area in the market. Then my area that I'm going to place like a green box is this area. Right over here, this pullback that held right there. And if I bring it across, I'm now roughly going to go 50% into this body of this candle where the volume closed above. And I'm going to bring this box across, all the way across. And I'm going to make it green. So that's maybe where there is good daily demand. See where it just broke down here, came, picked up the liquidity, and came right back up and closed above here. So if it ever comes back down to retest this area, I'm assuming that maybe it will hold with some demands if it gets tapped in again. So that's why I have this big green box there. And I'm going to bring it across for the rest of the week. Maybe next week it's a static zone. Um, and now just following, continuing with the upside momentum. Okay, so today we came up, we hit our 1930, respected as support, came back up where we opened short wick yesterday so there was enough momentum to break it and continue for new highs and today we came up to a roughly 1936 1937 on gold so what we're going to do is we're going to place a high purple line at the high of the day okay so if you guys are following, that's great. If you guys are just learning with me, that's fine too. Um, some of you guys already have your charts already done and they're already ready to go. So we're just matching or doing some confluence together. Okay, so that's our high of the day today. We got up there and it got rejected. And you can see like over here, it got there was some areas where there was a body, a body. Here it came down back up. So there is some resistance in this area up here and also if we pull back I'm gonna place a yellow line where we open today just in case we come back to this area it might hold as some support right there so a yellow line where we opened okay so we opened right here came down bearish we tested our 1930 it held it used to be resistance in the past but we got volume close above held as support found our found our bids found our buyers continue to push it up new high up to 1937 and then when we hit up there we're coming right back down right here to 1935 so if we come back down we're going to see if we can hold where we opened and if it can't then it might just trickle down just a little bit but i'd like to see today can we hold 1930 can can this can the daily buyers hold 1930 um, because that could make a statement going into tomorrow's FOMC if they can really protect 1930 and hold it as a support level. So if we continue breaking back up, back to the high of the day, and we break out a little bit, where could we possibly go? Maybe 1940, like right here, where we have a few bodies right here. So we got this red body, this green body, red body right here, around 1940. So that's one area. And then where all of these wicks are, every time we come up, we get rejected. Come up, get rejected. Come up, get rejected. Come up, get rejected. That is where we have our supply, like above us here. So I'm going to put a red box up there just to give me a heads up. If it is coming into here, it might get rejected, um, depending with how much momentum is coming up there. Okay, But just for reference, just going to place a red box up there just to give me a heads up if it comes up there now the overall daily pattern what do we see when we zoom like this okay we see it come down big level right here support 1885 coming back up we can't break 1950s over here so it pulled all the way right back down picked up the liquidity at 1900 came up again we're coming right back up so maybe we might have some momentum to test again this area. Maybe if if it pulls back with a lower height, we might pull back into here. And we got to see if we can hold that 1930 purple or any one of these yellow lines to hold this uptrend to see if we can break out of here. But it is building. It looks like a nice 
nice pattern where it came down right here. It, it's not a traditional double bottom where here's a double bottom. It's a higher low double bottom right here. So the bids are increasing and looking to possibly break this resistance. If we can break out of here, maybe the breakout, fill up a few of these wicks, maybe like on an impulse, but then it closes above here. And then maybe we re come back down to retest this big area and it holds then gold could be coming up to this level maybe you know um, we will definitely be watching that okay so that's a daily analysis of gold and then when we look back at it it's on a one two three four day uptrend right now making higher highs and higher lows um, right now maybe maybe we might get some consolidation um, going into FOMC tomorrow so that we will watch that let's now break down the daily candle into hourly so this is where we're going to start to dissect it now bring it down into hourly time frames so you can see right here and then you can see the specific times okay so 9 a.m on friday big bullish move pulled back hold above 50 percent higher low continue to come back up double top cannot break this area okay this is london now monday london 2 a.m 3 a.m push down come back down into here again now we have new york session wall street right here continue to push gold back up new highs come all the way through here monday and then we come back down tuesday here's london big push okay today so london had big volume pick it all up right here so this is london 3 a.m nice big bullish engulfing candle almost engulfed pretty much everything in the asian session we closed above the daily area this is like a three bar play with a little pause in the middle at 4 a.m 5 a.m continuing to be bullish 6 a.m we made our high of the day and then got rejected now we have these um spin top candles where the market is just trading sideways currently okay but there is a nice bullish hourly move making all of these higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher low, a new higher high. So what we want to see is, can we hold like this yellow area? I'm going to place like a green box just for visual to see if we can hold here. We want to hold above this to see if we can hold this hourly support that was built in London and if we, we want to hold this area if we break below this then it might come back down to the low of the day but we want to hold this momentum and see if we can continue maybe to get up to this red box up here like 1940s up here um, right now consolidating bullish flag it's consolidating in here so we're going to see with comex market open are we going to break out a little bullish is it going to retrace back down looking at the book now like at the depth of market let's keep an eye on these this heat right up here see here 1959 on the futures there's 255 offers and also above us right here we have 147 offers so compared to all the other depth of market there's a lot of offers above us so let's pay particular attention to see if this is going to be like a spoof are they going to come up, touch this liquidity, and then and then get rejected and go down? Are they going to? Is this going to be removed from the market, and then it's going to go right through here, bullish? So let's keep an eye too, guys, on these numbers right here, 1959 and up here. Um, these these orders as we get into Comex, and we'll see how those start to get distributed up there. But there is big orders we can see above us in the offers. Okay. So um, also just looking at the overall like trend of the market, like over here, we're trending up. It's making higher highs. Also over here, like if we're putting it together, we're looking at this. It could be developing into a like a wedge, but it's still got lots of room to move in here. Okay, so for any breakdowns, um, if we're bearish, we need to see a breakdown down in here, 1933, maybe break this, then it can break maybe the trend line and the low of the day and then start to trickle back down. But if it holds, we're looking for um, a break up to maybe 1940 today. Okay, so let's go to the five minutes, see how it's moving.
this is the five minute channel okay five minute uh, time frames five minute candles whatever you want to call it okay when we came down to the low of the day right before London 2:55 a.m. Eastern London had a big push came up to here 1934 pull back so we're holding this big green box that we just placed at that daily yellow line continuing to come up to the high of the day and push down so right now it's slowly pushing down making lower highs okay so when this big red body candle came down retracement to about 50 percent push down came up and then a new low again if we hold below 50 percent of this big red body candle we still have maybe pressure pushing us down so we'll see if we can come down maybe into the screen box could be maybe a possible buying opportunity off of there and go back up but we'll see what happens when it comes in here right now in the five minutes this level okay right here used to be support right there so I'm just gonna bring this smaller green box across to see if the five minute candles can hold this area before it comes into this bigger box and we'll see if we can continue with momentum and start to break out of here um, we'll keep an eye on that as well okay and there's also a scalper pro signal sell for gold um, below 1935.50 uh, so like right below here right below 50 percent of this body like right here I'm gonna place a red box here just to show that it, it, um, if you want to sell below here we got to break this support level and drop down into here okay and then I can add some moving averages let's add a moving average our 9 EMA is this green line okay right here 9 EMA is the green line we're below it right now and then the 200 is right here right below the the daily critical area 1933 in the screen hourly box right here at 1932 1933 so maybe this might push down down into here and hold at this 200 in the screen box and maybe go up okay um, just looking at RSI indicator we were overbought up here on the first peak and overbought up here on this higher high peak um, and it's showing divergence a high and a higher high price is pushing up while strength is remaining the same or decreasing is showing a little bit of divergence and we had this bearish move coming right back down here um, and we'll see if it can really break this support level and start to push down okay so that's gold it's 749 guys okay we have over 30 more minutes until we hit comex market open So I'm going to continue doing like our top-down analysis. Maybe we can get also our indices out of the way and then we don't have to rush going into Wall Street. So let's do that as well. Um, we'll just continue chugging along here. This is a consolidated area right here. Okay. So if you don't feel comfortable like trading this area, then just kind of trap it with a neutral box and let's wait and see what happens inside here. If you bring it to the left, you can see when other times in this box where the volume was inside here and how it just broke out right there and came right back down we're trading right back in the box so yes it could continue to maybe break out bullish for a double top at the high of the day or it could break down here and come down to this level if you're trading from like this zone to this zone I highly recommend you measure the zone so you know what you're dealing with so if you get into like a, a, uh, a sell or, or a buy or whatever you're trading, just from there to there, you know it's about 10 to 11, 12 pips. Um, you, you know, so you, there's no surprises when you're trading. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue to keep, uh, we'll keep gold right over here. Guys, I'll give you guys this chart in the zoom. One second. Okay, there's a link in the Zoom chat, um, Tim, uh, of the of this chart if you guys want it. Okay, and I'm gonna place a yellow line right up here because I, I say it, but some people forget about it. So I'm gonna place a yellow line right up here. 
at this area I want to watch this 255 265 uh, contracts on offer for gold because if those start coming down then there could be some bearish momentum pushing through here if these offers start to get lowered into these bids okay so let's just move over now and do a quick little top-down analysis on US 30 and NASDAQ and then we'll get ready for COMEX and we'll be ready for Wall Street as well. Maybe we get one of them done. Okay, so I'll start off with uh, with Dow over here. Okay, daily on Dow. Okay, look at how it's trading in here. Just right from like last week, okay, we got some consolidation. Then there was this big bullish candle Thursday come up and right away engulfed on Friday, come right back down. Yesterday, that's what I mean. Yesterday was very, very thin volume on US 30. It was a very choppy day yesterday. It was a tough day, low volume. There was no news. And you can see by the daily candle, it's a small, tiny doji candle with not much range, okay? And today, just very similar, opened. Uh, we came down, made a low, that's our high, and there's where we're at. So there's not much range right now. There's not much volume in the market. I personally believe that the market is waiting for FOMC on Wednesday to make any significant moves this week and um, waiting to see what they're going to do with the Fed funds rate. Um, so if you are trading again today, you can see it's very, it's it's small right now. It might be bullish. It might come up and test 50% of yesterday's 34,800 body, um, but it, it is building in a small little range right here. It is still considered to be bullish because we are pushing up from this trend right here. There is a pullback still holding higher lows. Maybe we will continue to break out. If we do, where could it potentially go to? Maybe right up here. Um, to a, a wick, a wick over here, like about 50% of this red candle inside here. So I'm just going to place a yellow line right there. And then also place like a red box. Just so it's, I know if it does come up there, there's still that big resistance coming down right here on, on Friday of last week. So if it does come back up in here, maybe it comes up and then they push it right back down. So I want to have this area identified over here. And also, um, if we do break out of here, where could it go? Impulse break maybe up to this wick right here, 34,862 could be one area right up there where it could break out. I don't need to continue to put more... Um, areas above because we're right over here right now with the volume so as it comes up and approaches this red box then I can start to go back to the daily and start to look where it could possibly go but um, if you don't want to continue to put lines on your chart I don't recommend that you do just focus on where the volume currently is in the market right now and where it could possibly go okay so let's say maybe it's a lower high today maybe they pinned it right there at the high of the day it's lower than yesterday we have the big red bearish candle coming down on Friday maybe the selling pressure will continue to push down and come down to the low of the day when we come down to the low of the day if it breaks there's a wick here all these wicks where it did come down in the past um, so let's just put fresh low from yesterday right there that's our fresh low from yesterday if it comes down maybe it holds there maybe it comes back up if it breaks then where is our daily demand? It's inside this gap up. This is where they gapped up a, a move here. They gapped up a body. So I'm gonna place a green box right below here. The gap from here. Thursday, they gapped it up on the Friday and they also gapped it up going into Monday. So there was a big bullish momentum. Pullbacks came back into here and went right back up. Pullback Friday, higher low and went right back up. So we're going to see today if it comes back down into here is it going to hold this green box or is it going to break and drop and if it does 
maybe come down to these two bodies right here at 34,420 or 430 area right in there okay um, or it might just be a sideways choppy day until we get FOMC tomorrow okay um, that that could be what could happen if we look at the overall move of the daily what do we got okay so we got we got rejected up here push down it's a higher low from over here came back up with momentum lower high pushed it down again but we cannot it didn't create any new new lows so it's a higher low continuing to come right back up but then again a lower high m top so it came up here back down there's our neckline came back up big friday sell off and now we're just consolidating right in this little pocket right here so yes it could continue to break out and test these highs or it could break down here and take out these lows or we just can continue to consolidate in here until we get our major news tomorrow um, so just breaking down down now to the hourly okay so we had our big drop right over here on Friday come down little sympathy rally back up come back up here reject it come back down barcoding like this is not ideal for trading guys red green even on the hourly it's very difficult to try and figure out the direction where it's moving so we're just in this range right now we're stuck in this range it's an ugly range yesterday and today um, but hourly okay this big body candle was London okay we saw in gold as well so we had a big body candle in London continue to push for the high of the day around 6 a.m. now it's pulling back where to about 50% of London's volume okay, right there about half of it I'm gonna place a white line at the hourly line here and came down held going back up okay so we're gonna see if we can continue to maybe hold this area and break out for the high of the day if it does where's our next hourly resistance right up here these two wicks and all of these bodies right here at 34,720 today maybe we'll look to see if it can come back up there and touch that if not if we break and we lose 50 percent of london's volume then it has a high probability we're going to come back down into the low of the day down in here and if it breaks might drop down look at where most of the price action is um, if it breaks maybe like right around here we had all these bodies right here that wick that pulled down right there that wick that touched that white line again right over here could break down into there um, could be a head and shoulder pattern left shoulder the head that they broke out coming now wrapping around the right shoulder and maybe push down a little more um, but we could see it come down pick up liquidity and just shoot right back up so we'll be watching that going into Wall Street as well and then on the five minutes if you're trading the fives okay just hit our high of the day up here let's find some levels in the market okay so over here this used to be resistance turned into support and now back to resistance so I'm just bringing this box across and making it red okay and over here this is a zone as well look at all these wicks right here okay, you can clearly see when we came down here those three wicks held 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 okay green support and if I bring this across then I can see that they just came down down to that hourly white line coming right back up and inside here so let's see if it's gonna trade inside this area if it's gonna come back down to break down down in here um, so we'll continue to watch this and right now it is we've got also like a lower high right here where they're pushing it down if you kinda wanna trap the volume and you don't feel comfortable trading this stuff maybe trap this area and then we watch see how it builds inside here okay and then if we're uh, adding EMAs 9 EMA we're right at the 9 EMA 200 we're right at the 200 so this is where things can get a little choppy in here it could be potential maybe a 
death cross where the nine crosses the below the 200 and it drops it could be a fake out where it just comes down here fakes out and goes back up um, so we can watch that as well okay yep we'll go back to gold right now okay so we'll keep us 30 here um, later on i'm going to do nasdaq as well okay so i just wanted to We'll do NASDAQ in a bit, okay? So we'll keep these two indices on this chart and we'll look at gold by itself, okay? So it's eight o'clock, guys. Let's follow gold now going into COMEX 820 and then we got our 830 uh, Canadian news and we'll watch how gold is moving. You guys have any questions about anything? Did anybody in the group take the GBP USD signal? Running 30 pips here. No. Okay, guys. Um, I I'll start to um, we'll start to do some forex as well in these sessions as well. Um, we'll start to add these in here as well. But there was this GBP USD. Okay, guys. So watch above like this area, the white line, 123.86. Start to get some volume closing above here and then start to push up and take out these previous highs where it's running 30 pips right now. So no, I didn't take it, but I'm just saying I was just asking if anybody in the group has taken it. Okay, so um, when we came, it came down right down here, okay, 750 came down to this area where there's now good support and it's coming right back up to test about 50% of this body, this candle. Let's see in 30 seconds, can it close above here and maybe continue with bullish momentum pushing back up. Remember our high of the day. Okay, it's right there, purple line. So what I'm going to do up there at the purple uh, at the purple high of the day is just put a red box, again visual, just to let us know that that is a critical area. It's the high of the day, going into possible COMEX. So we'll see what they'll do up there. And remember these big orders here. Okay, the yellow line. Remember there was 265, there's 253 and 152. It could just be a spoof where they just remove them, they pull them out of the market, and then the bids just continue to go right through here. Or they could actually come up there and transact and then maybe push the market down right there. But it is showing, like it's it's visual. You can We can all clearly see there's a big, big liquidity orders pending in the market here and here. And that is, near the high of the day okay so when we put the puzzle together we got to really pay attention to what's going to happen with this okay what do you guys think what do you guys think i'm going to ask you guys do you guys think that these are like hidden offers up here and will get moved out and they're like a spoof or um you think that these will get transacted and maybe start to push gold down or you think we're going to break right through here push into it yeah 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 it's it's getting it's probably push into it maybe even before comex spoof Vito yeah we can we can that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at to see if it's gonna be like a spoof order here some of you guys are saying down from there yeah that's good analysis so maybe they want to come take out the liquidity at the high of the day 
and then you have your sellers waiting up there okay James, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's good. Good. Um, James says too much of a block at one specific level, they're going to pull it. Yeah, that's I've seen that millions of times, James. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, every single day it's different. So but I've seen that plenty of times where there's a where there's an unusual block at an area. And when the market gets up there, it gets pulled and it just disappears. Okay, so we did get rejected. So it came up. Okay, did it touch the high of the day? No, high of the day is right here, the purple line. Okay, so it's a lower high, pushing right back down. Now what I like to see is 50% of the body. If the sellers are pushing it down, will it still hold 50% of this bullish momentum and hold and maybe come back up, or is it now building to come down? Okay, so some traders trade before COMEX. Some wait after COMEX market open. That's going to be in 12 minutes. Some wait for the 8.30 news. Normally at this time, 8.30, we have USD red folders, which really, really do affect uh, the movement of gold. So some traders don't trade until after. So it's all just personal preference. Is anybody in any trade right now in gold? Or are you in anything right now? I'm personally not. Uh, there's my you're in gold cells yeah cells okay you guys are selling yeah okay so um, we want it to, to sell okay so we want these offers to stand up here um, we want to kind of maybe if they do come up to take out liquidity of the high of the day see this trend line that I did from from the hourly okay maybe if it breaks out of here maybe we see a move take out the high of the day come up to like this trend line and that's where those big block offers are and maybe if they transact in there maybe it pushes down back down into here pull back we use this those offers get lowered and then we start dropping down into here that is one possible path guys with what we can see in the book right now with all of these offers above us okay they could come up to take out the the liquidity take out the high of the day and then and then you have your blocks of your offers that could maybe push a path down like this that's one scenario will it happen i have no idea um, but it is a possible um, scenario but also the flip side if they spoof if they pull these out then like you get the same move where it breaks the high of the day and they pull those offers and then when it comes down to retrace now a big buyer steps in and puts bids where the, the the spoofed move was and puts a big large order of bids and all of a sudden they transact the bids and then it's using the high of the day as a support level and then you got gold breaking out bullish okay so that's the beauty of trading is anticipating what's gonna happen kind of maybe make a prediction yourself and if it goes in your direction, then maybe trade it. If it goes against you, then yeah, okay, maybe your prediction wasn't correct on, on, on today, but with, with more practice, you can get better and better and better in doing what you're doing. You don't need to be a perfect trader. There's no perfect traders in the world. Okay, there's some really good traders that trade with 70% consistency, and uh, they do really well. There's some with even lower but they um, have good risk management skills. So I like to look at levels myself, okay? Like I like to personally look at levels, like over here, this was a level in the market okay you can see where it came up 
back down right at this kind of body right over here and then it came up again you can see resistance push down came up again one two three four bars came right back up then this big bearish engulfing candle 735 push it right back down we come right back up now we had the volume close above this level now so we're gonna see if we hold I, I can trap this even more like inside here now right up here okay so maybe we're gonna see are they gonna come up and do that move take out the highs and then maybe push it back down back down into here retest this then we get our drop coming down okay but inside here if they want to just continue to accumulate in here maybe it's a no trade zone continue to watch well we're right at our high of the day let's take a look at the hourly okay hourly okay look at our hourly candles okay so we had the big one okay London let's just go back to London London market big hourly candle push pullback 4 a.m. we're still holding above well above 50% of London's volume, that yellow line where we have the green box. Then we come in 5 a.m., another big bullish candle. Then we have a new higher high, higher low consolidation, volume right in the middle. Again, the hour prior, 7 a.m., same equal high, equal low, volume spin top right in the middle, indecision. Then we have a big bullish candle right now, pushing at 8 a.m., coming up, taking out the high, but there's the high of the day. So yes, could it go higher? Where could it go? Now let's look above the purple line on the hourly. These are our hourly candles above the purple line, okay? So let's look at where we have some traffic or some interest. Right up here. This is a, an area. Okay, here it came up and that's where it got rejected. One, two, three times. Here it held, see the wicks came down, but the vo body of volume was right at the white line. Here it kind of hovered around, and then there's where it got rejected at the white line and pushed down. That is 1938, okay? From from 1936 to here, one area, okay? Um, it could go up to there. Okay, so continuing with this bullish momentum, we're at the top of the channel, so see this channel? Right up here, we're right close to the top, right at the high of the day. So it's still pushing. RSI on the hourly is approaching 70, okay? It's making a high, a higher high, and a new higher high, while strength is slowly decreasing. But with COMEX market open and momentum, and it could continue to break through here, okay? So we have to be very careful. It's, it's still very strong on the hourly, when we go into the 15 minutes, you have 15 minute candle building really, really strong, looking to break out of here right before COMEX, okay? So careful with short positions too, guys, because this is where they could really push it out of here. Now you see how it's coming up bullish right up to that 250. And we're about five, six, five minutes away from COMEX market open, okay? So it will get volatile, guys, so please be careful. Okay, we just closed above the high of the day. Just closed above it. Okay, so with the closure above the high of the day, what I do is, okay, this red box, I just change it to green to see if this will hold now as a support level and continue to build. But you can see it's a new high of the day. It just closed above. We're approaching that level. Okay, there was 250, now 230. Here's the big bearish candle coming down. And in four minutes, we're going to get COMEX market open, okay? And there's going to be a range. There's going to be some volatility. So please, guys, trade safe. Don't over leverage. Our, our CVD, our cumulative volume delta, is negative 236. It's staying below the baseline, like zero. It's been attempted right here and pushed right back down. It attempted again right here at the VWAP, where it pushed down, came all the way down to here, negative 300. And since then, it's been rotating up.
coming right back up maybe to trigger these orders up here. Okay, and there is some bearish divergence. If you guys do use this indicator for divergence, RSI, from this previous high right there, RSI was at 74.75. This new high right up here, the RSI is down to 65. So it's showing a decrease in strength while the price is going up. So it's showing a divergence. Maybe they want to come up there and grab all of that liquidity hit those pending orders, and then maybe the market rotates down. Okay, but we're two and a half minutes away from market open, COMEX market open. Okay, so we just retrace right back down to about 50%, 50% of the previous bullish candle, caught some, caught some bids, and we're coming up now as a hammer candle, continuing to break out. Okay, so now right into the liquidity. Okay, so you know what we tell you, like price action is attracted to come into the levels of high levels of liquidity. So now it's right there. Okay, so we're going to see how it's going to transact two minutes right before COMEX market open. Okay guys, so we have about 60 seconds and then COMEX market open. There's going to be some volatility, okay? So there's going to be increased volume that hits the market when that when that session opens up. So if you're in buys, if you're in sells, just please guys, uh, monitor your trading, monitor your stop loss. Try to the best of your ability to not over leverage. Just try and learn that concept guys. It will make your trading that much easier. Okay, so we have an indecision candle, spin top where it broke out, came down, the volume is right in the middle, right at the high of the day, right there, that purple line, 1937 areas are high of the day. And trading right near that block. And there's also another big one right above it, okay? Spreads as well, guys. Check your spreads before you take trades. They increase. Okay, so here we go. This is COMEX now. We've opened green right at this area of demand. Is it going to come up and fill that prior wick? No. So it's coming down red. Will it take out this prior low? Okay, if you just go candle by candle. No, it's still holding a higher low. Okay, so it's just in a small range right now very weak volume for the market open for COMEX, but it could flood in, okay? Coming down red, again, it came down red, still held the higher low, now coming right back up. So just in this little range right now, testing the high of the day here. And also pay attention to what's going on here with these orders, 228, are they going to start to remove? Are they going to start to pull them? Are they going to add? Okay, see how they just got pulled? Did you see that? Okay, now there's only 30. So it gives clearance for the bulls to drive right through here and maybe come up to the next area. Did you see that, guys? Okay, so remember we had the yellow line. There was 250 orders. Now there's only 30. So they pulled them. They pulled 220 orders. And where did they place them? 
I don't see it. It's still here is 150 right here. So it gives clearance to the bulls to break through here. Okay, so that was a spoof. That first block right there was a spoof. Now, okay, so it allowed it to come up to the top of the range and now come right back down. This is the fight now. Okay, so we'll see if they start to come back in those offers. Will they come back in and populate the market here? But that was a good example to show you guys. Some of you guys that are not familiar with how a depth of market works, just like that, how quickly it got pulled and just that move that just went through there. If you're a scalper, that could that could get you your five, ten pips, you know, just by looking at the depth of market and learning what happened in there. Okay. But we got rejected. Okay. So maybe they came up there, grabbed the liquidity got rejected. Let's see if the selling pressure can continue to maybe close below this area down here. If not, it could continue building. I'm still waiting. I'm still on the sidelines over here. Not a major, like, impactful open of Comex, okay? It's not the, not usual open we see. Slow volume, low volume, yeah. Uh, the program for the or order book is called Book Map, Book Map. You can use our link and you can download it um, and you and practice with BTC with Bitcoin for free if you guys like. Okay, so we're getting lots of indecision up here. There's a lot of indecision at the high of the day for gold. Now sellers continue to push it down maybe. Maybe it came up there, grab some of that liquidity, maybe pushing down now. Let's see where this first five minute candle will close. How will it close? The formation of it, there's 60 seconds left. And CVD right now, negative 400. So there is a lot of selling going on. And then, yep, we also have the news at 8.30 tomorrow. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so let's see. We got now a bearish candle that took out the highs. Maybe grab some money up there, grab that liquidity. Now pushing down. Will it close below 50% of that green body? And if it does, let's flip this green box back to red in case there's any pullbacks or retracements coming into here. Okay, so maybe they pinned it nicely now, pushing it down, right back down to the VWAP. We're closing. Here's the green candle open. Let's see if it comes up to 50% of the red body or the red zone here. Okay, so it's coming right back up for the retest. Let's see if it gets rejected now. If the offers now start to populate the market and push this down. So it's still in this tight range right here. Okay, there's a nice pull up, rejection, push down. Okay, nice sell here. Okay, and if you want to sell right before, remember we have news coming. Okay. I'm going to wait till 8.30, guys. But yeah, it was a... So... We see nice, nice took out the highs. They took out the liquidity up there and they're pushing it down. Let's see if the momentum can continue to really push down. Negative CVD, almost negative 700. So sellers are in control of the situation right now from Comex Market Open. Okay, but I'd like to see if volume can close below in this zone. 
maybe there's going to be a pullback, come back up with news, and then maybe they really push it down. Mavuz, you think news will push it down further? Okay, so let's let's see that. Yep, we got news in three minutes. Okay, but we also want to see if volume can close below in this area. Otherwise, it's just gonna like it could possibly come right back up again to test. Okay, so we're right again at the VWAP. We have a big block right here. There's a block right here. Two and a half minutes to go and then we have our news okay canadian news so and there's a lot of red folder canadian news which will impact the markets whatever you're trading guys if you guys are trading crude oil gold if you're trading indices there's going to be some volatility coming in the market in the next two minutes so just be prepared be aware don't over leverage make sure you have a mental or physical stop loss in the market and uh, let's see what happens here Okay, so it's also important to watch where the volume will close. Will it, is it going to close near the low of the of the body? Is it going to come right back up and close up here, and then maybe start green the next well, as soon as they release the news? So it's also important, guys, to watch where the bodies close because it's a big range. It's a larger range candle now with with increased volume, but it's also important to know where it will close who is in control of it will it close near the low and maybe continue to push down with news okay and also spreads too guys okay check your spreads i'm at um point point eight right now so less than a pip right now to trade gold less than one pip so that's a really good spread favorable spread And then we really want to break this if selling we want to really break this support level because it's held since 5 5 a.m today okay and then right here it also just bounced right off right before 8 a.m so if the selling can really break this down we might be walking down into this area on the daily down in here Pitman, you're at six pip spread. That's too high. That's too high, unfortunately, to um, to to scalp with. Okay, guys, remember this. Remember what I was just saying. Where will it close? Okay, eight seconds. It was just down here, just a couple of seconds ago. Now it's all the way right back up here. So the bids are taking over right at the end, right going into the news. Okay, so we got now a green coming up. Okay, so it was off of that wick. We didn't get the volume close below. Came up. Now push down. Now it's dropping. Okay, so coming right back up. Let's see if we can still stay below this area. Nice. Okay, sell guys. Yeah, selling looks good. I'm going to enter in a cell. I'm going to place my stop like above this red box. And I'm going to look to see if it can break this uh, support level down in here. See if it can come into this liquidity level right here at 1955. I'd like to see if we can take out this support area right here.
Okay, there we go, guys. Okay, so we just tapped right into it. Can we take out that low? There's going to be a pullback too in there. Okay, because there's going to be obviously bids waiting below that low. Okay, there. Let's draw. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Some of you guys were in way, way, way before me. Okay. So let's see if we can take that out. It, it, it pushed down, new low. There's going to be bids that bring it right back up. We're going to see where it can close. Where it can close is important to the close. So now it's going to, it came down, tested where the block was, coming back up. Now are the offers going to come down and populate below the VWAP and start to maybe eat up these bids and start to push down lower. We do have the CVD on our side, negative 800. Okay, but there is also going to be always buyers looking to buy. Okay, so we have another about 90 seconds to go into the close of this candle. So you see these these zones, how they act as support. Okay, so it came down. Some of you guys were selling before they even knew. Okay, so you got to use this as a target, guys. You have to. Okay, either to scale out a little bit. Um, Okay, so there was a big rejection there. Coming right back up. Where will the body close? Is it going to close back in here? Come back up. Is it going to try for that double top, the high of the day? Is it going to be bullish? Maybe gold is going to reverse and come up bullish. Let's see how the offers, how they react to, to this big move coming off of there. Yeah, Craig, you got your 10 pips in and out. I, guys, I trade much. I, I don't know if the people on YouTube know the way how I trade, but I trade completely different than most traders. Um, I did, that's why it's difficult for me to trade like this um, because I'm, I'm, I go for like 10 pips. Someone said that was a big stop loss, but um, if I took the trade and went right away, right into profit. Um, I trade different, guys, okay? Um, trade much different than most traders. I have a different, completely, completely different style. I have a very, very aggressive style. It's um, smaller pips. Uh, I use a different lot size, but I'm still holding this. I'm still in it, okay? I want to see if we can close back below here. I want to see if these offers can really absorb all the bids. Coming right back down. I'd like to see it close below this level right here. There could be obviously pullbacks, but what I'm looking at are the offers coming back down. Okay, so this is a big block in the market right here. Big block. You can see it's, it's showing right here, this one. That's that heat, that 1955, where there's those 81 bids right there. That's what sellers, that's what trying to break right now. Okay, can we break this block right here? I'd love for that to break. And then maybe we can continue to come down, trickle down into 1933, down into here. But the closure, the closure below here is going to be very, very, very critical.
Okay, so if we just look at like uh, the hourly candle. Okay, remember the hourly candle? Now it flipped. Okay, so our hourly candle, remember, was really, really bullish. Took out the high of the day. Grab that liquidity rate right in Cormax, and now coming down. That's why this green box, see it's the last three hours. That's our support right there from 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. That's why I'm trying to see if red volume will close below this green box because that's where the bears could come in and push the market down right below the green box. But if the buyers hold it, then you're going to get some hourly buyers come in the market and try to come up to the high of the day and, and break out gold. So it's it's at such a critical area in the market right now that um, if you're if you're not in a trade, um, I would just monitor the situation if you're not in a trade right now because we're at such critical levels. We're at the high of the day where the bulls are fighting it and we're at this critical level where the selling pressure is trying to break it. It's negative 950 of CVD. There is a lot of accumulation on the sell side, but there's just strong support at this level that they're not allowing it currently to break right now. And then at 9 a.m., we already have US 30 done. We've done the top down, and then we'll do NASDAQ, and then we'll watch how the indices move into Wall Street as well. But let's just stick with gold right now. Continue watching this thing. Okay, so we got 40 seconds to go into the close. We still have an ignited red candle that pushed down pushing down. Let's see if they can trap some more buyers up here and continue to maybe close it near the low. No, there's so much, so much activity going on in here. Yeah, the dollar is moving through this month, but gold is just not moving. There's just so much support right now for gold. It's, it's, yep. Yeah. On other days, you'd probably see gold dropping right now. This is how the markets operate, guys. Okay, so let's just follow. We got it ignited, open, push down. Okay, so can we take out these wicks and continue to drop? This is the big block. Okay, I'll put a yellow line. Maybe some of you guys, yellow lines. This is, okay. So that's that big block right there. We want to see if we can trade down into this and take that block out. It will drop sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, who knows? But every time we're coming down, it's making these higher lows. That's why that's why it's it's gaining momentum so then it's going to pull back up maybe for a double top at the high of the day up here and that's kind of where my stop loss is so i might get stopped out of this trade up here Yeah, this is why trading is not the easiest, okay? It can get intense. But if you're not over leveraging, if you're not over leveraging, you can allow a trade to breathe. If you're going all in, yeah, you're going to you're going to probably panic, but that's not a good idea to do that. I'm risking 
0.2%, 0.2% of my 1% of my entire day. So this is my first trade. I still have four more trades to do, um, but I'm risking 0.2% of my overall 1% of the day today. So I can still monitor it. I'm not panicking. I'm still watching it, lower high, push down. If it continues to go maybe in my direction, maybe I'll, I'll add another position. But my bias is still on, on the sell side, I'm still holding it. I, it goes into profit, 5, 10 pips, puts me in drawdown, 5, five pips, okay? Uh, but still holding that. I want to see for the bigger move to break this green box and start to drop down in here. That's my um, bias, you know? Some of you guys are completely opposite from me. That's fine. That's what trading is. We got to be open to debate. We got to be open to criticism. I might be looking for a sell. You guys are looking for a buy. Some days you guys are looking for a buy. I'm looking for a sell. But that's what trading is. And in different time frames too. Okay, so it's it's hard because some of us are one minute scalpers. So, you know, like uh, right away when we, if we took that, yeah, it did drop down 10 pips right away in a, in a couple minutes. That's normally how I trade. But when we're doing this, I'm holding this more for the bigger move. But personally, when I'm trading by myself, sometimes I'm out of that right away. Okay, but here we're coming back down. Okay, so see this transaction of this green green bubble right here? Buyers are stuck there. That's what we want. We want to get them trapped. We want to move the market away. Now pushing back down one minute. Let's see if we can take out the low and close below this yellow line. There's going to be bids that are going to bid it right back up. Okay, because we're, we're new lows will attract new buyers. Okay, right back into 10 pips profit. I can close the trade if I want, and but I don't want to. I want to, I'm holding it for this move. So here we go, 30 seconds. Who will have momentum going into the close? The sellers really pinned it down. Okay, we got lower high, lower high, lower high. We got the volume, but can we close below this critical block? We haven't closed below this thing since 5 a.m. Eastern. And if we close right here, okay, here, let's watch the close. It might be an ignited bar, okay? There's the push down. I'm going to flip this green box red right now. Hopefully we can close below there. Yeah, ignited bar. There's the push. Okay, it's going to retrace back up. Let's see if we can now hold, 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 and drop. And let's see if we can get that move to come down, maybe down to here for 20 pips, down to that daily 200 EMA down in here. We can really push it down. Okay, so that's the new low, okay? Just guys, any any security you're trading, not just gold, any security you're trading, when something makes a new low, there's always gonna be a bitter waiting, okay? There's always, no matter what, no matter what you're trading. So there's gonna be where something breaks a low and then it retraces right back up. But this is where you gotta now use your analysis. I always try to measure 50% of the bulk of the previous candle to see, it, can it stay below that? The retracement's right at the retracement, right at our green box, it's still holding. So it is still technically bearish. The sellers are still holding position, but we need to continue to push down at this low and we're right at that block where we were, that's where it's trading at right now. Okay, there's a nice rejection. Now with volume, can they push that bar down? US 30 guys, nice nice drop on US 30. Some of you guys got that, US 30. Yeah, 
Good job, Sonia. Nice one. Chris, no, I respect you too, man. Yeah, you don't sell or buy because of what we say. Your decision is yours. Uh, absolutely, that's 100% respect, yeah. Whether it's myself or Dave, you guys, some people just use us as like analysis, but at the end of the day, you got to make your own decisions. Um, don't trade, just, I don't trade off of listening to other people. I don't care who it is. You know, like if I'm listening to the best trader in the world, I still at the end of the day have to make my own decision. Just like you guys. We're a team here. I use analysis from you guys, everything. I ask you guys, are you guys buying? Are you guys selling? Not everyone's going to have the same bias. That's trading. Okay, right now I'm selling and there's people buying. So the only way I can profit is off of buyers. Okay, but that's what trading is, guys. You know, it's... Okay, so now we broke below this level. First five minutes, okay? So anything can happen. Now it's coming right back up. Okay, so this is the pullback coming up. Can it hold 50% of the bearish volume of the of the previous bar? So I always just like kind of eyeball what is about half of the, from the open to the close, that's about half of it. Will this green body close above it? If it does, then it's got a high probability it's gonna come right back up to here. If it can stay below there, if the sellers can keep it below, then we still have the selling momentum that could continue to maybe absorb more and more buyers and then break it down in here. But gold, this is how it moves, guys. You know, that's why I, I personally trade US 30 and more indices myself. I'm not, I don't trade gold um, too much. It's a different type of security. Like it was a drop for about what, 15 pips? Like, like stressing out for 15 pips. Sometimes US 30, one candle can drop 50, 30 pips right away, you know? So just knowing the security of trading, I knew that I'm trading gold. I lowered my lot size because I knew there could be sideways trading, go up 10 pips, 15 pips come back up, maybe hit my stop loss, things like that. I'm still in the trade. It's active. It's open. I'm really looking for it to break down below here. Bronson, can I do a class on US 30? Yeah, I, 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 no worries. Like I, I, I'm, I love Bronson. I love trading US 30. Just US 30? Yeah, I'm down for that. But it's so hard to please everybody. If we do that, then someone's going to say, Ron, let's do NASDAQ. Ron, let's do S&P. Ron, let's do gold. Ron, let's do oil. Ron, let's do GU, GJ. Ron, let's look at Apple. Ron, let's look at NASDAQ. <laughs> it's it's just, it's, we'll, we'll, we'll make it in the title. This will be a US 30 only session. I try to please everybody, but it's not easy. It's not easy, guys. Mexican peso, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so just going through what just happened here. We had that big push down, close below. They did take out the low. That's good. That's th This is important information to continue a trend pushing down. you got to have new lows. Unfortunately, when it did come down there, there was a big block of bids right here that took the market right back up. But now we're kind of trading inside this zone. So this red box can't be red anymore. I'm going to have to flip it green right now because the volume is above. So it just kind of impulsively broke down here and came right back up. So now with more momentum and more order book flow pushing down, more orders coming down, can they continue to absorb and get below this yellow line, 1955 down here? If the selling pressure can continue, CVD is negative 1000 right now, okay? So there is a lot of accumulation on the sell side. It just, sometimes you got to keep absorbing buyers in order to bring it down here but these are pullbacks it could be a pullback 
where the market dropped here, pulling back maybe to here, and maybe it does come back down. But when it comes back down now, this is a green box. It could be developing more bids now. And then gold could be starting to come up bullish to take out the high of the day. So that's where my stop loss is up there. I never took out any profit because I was looking for a bigger move. But that could be coming to target my stop loss up here now. Um, and then if they if they come up here, yeah, I'm going to get stopped out because I don't want to get caught in a high of the day pump and, and then be at a bigger loss. So sometimes you've got to understand that you might get stopped out of trading. Or you have a clear set plan from here to there to there. And you mark up your zones and you know that it might be a 10 pip drop, maybe a 15, maybe a 20 pip drop. And when it gets there, then you have to know that you have a job to do as a trader. Either close the trade Go, I could have gone to a break even. I could have. And right now I would have been stopped out at a break even. I didn't. Okay, the woulda, shoulda, couldas. I didn't do that. Um, I'm letting the trade run free here. I could have scaled out a little bit when it dropped down there on that bar. I could have. Woulda, shoulda, couldas. I didn't. Okay, so you know, you gotta know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing when I'm trading like by myself. I have one vision, one plan. But with gold, I was really looking for it to break down with all of the selling pressure, with the current order book, the way how it's looking. CVD is really, really nice in the red. So I'm looking for a bigger move down in here. It might take a while to develop. I hope that I don't get stopped out while it's developing. I hope that the offers can get lowered in the time being and come down in there. We'll get to US 30 in just a minute. I just want to finish off this hourly candle, okay? Because, guys, you got to pay attention to your hourly candles too, even if you're a scalper. Look what's going on on the hourly, okay? So look at the range, okay? Remember, at the start, it took out the high. Then we came all the way down. That was us just selling all the way down there, but it came right down to this physical level. Um, oh, sorry, the green box right here. That's what I'm looking for it to come down to today. Uh, came down here, won't break this thing, coming right back up. So um, just watching to see where this hourly body will close. And then we have the new hourly candle coming in, in four and a half minutes. That's going to bring in that, that momentum too. So um, two things can happen. It could It could open with bearish momentum and come right back down. It could open with bullish momentum and then just drive right up here. And unfortunately, that's where my stop loss is. How many of you guys, when you guys are trading, okay, I'm going to ask you guys a real question. Be honest. Okay, like right now, I'm in a trade, my stop loss right here. I'm using a mental stop loss right here. I could easily give it more room to breathe and go like this. How many of you guys do this when you're trading? Do you guys, like if you're, do you guys, do you guys go with where you set it? Or do you guys kind of start to increase it? Um, do you guys judge whether, what size you're using to do that? Do you guys do that? Or once you set it, it's set in stone. Do you guys manipulate your stop losses like that? No, you don't, Russell, you don't move your stops. Never increase use structure. I don't have stop loss. No, you should be using a stop loss, TFI. Should be always using a stop loss. No one is above the markets. You should always have a stop loss, whether it's a hard stop loss or it's a mental stop loss, but you should not be trading these markets with no stop loss.
Yeah, I'm kind of like you guys. I don't move it. I kind of, where I set it, that's where I leave it. And then if I do get stopped out, oh, that's, it's uh, it's all good. I got stopped out. But if you keep increasing it, you're going to learn maybe bad habits. You're going to increase it, say, oh, I'm going to give it maybe another five more pips up here. Then when it comes up, then you're going to probably learn the bad habit and say, okay, I'm going to give it another five more, ten more pips to breathe. And then where you were possibly could have been stopped out at 15, 20 pips, now you're in a 40 pip um, loss because you just keep increasing it. Guys, you got to keep it kind of maybe set in stone where you put it, whether, and again, we can have this debate. Some traders trade with mental stop loss, some trade with a physical hard stop, but whatever it is, try not to keep increasing your stop loss if the trade is going against you. You're just making things worse um, and it might not ever recover and then you're going to take a much bigger loss where you could have just taken the loss and maybe recovered because now you're focused on another trade and recovered your loss. But if you're still stuck in that same trade and you keep increasing your loss, you're going to cause a lot of damage to your account over the long run. So it's just my advice, you know, um, I'm not trying to tell people how to trade or anything, but I just wanted to ask that question. Some of you guys are really good. I saw some of you guys are very disciplined. You guys don't play around with the stop loss. So again, we're continuing to push down. Here we go. So 50 seconds. This is what I'm watching. Going into the new hour. Okay. Is it going to come down with that bearish momentum the next hour? Is it going to come up bullish? Right now, every time we're coming down, it's making a higher low, a higher low, and a higher low. We have a lower high, lower high, lower high. So it's in a flag right now. So it's anyone's move. Buyers can bring it right back up and sellers can bring it right back down. It's, it's in this tight flag right now. Again, we can, we can, like, I can, I can uh, reevaluate the trade. I'm basically almost like right at a break even with minimal drawdown. I can close this trade right now with a few pip loss and just reevaluate the uh, um, coming in. Okay. That's another thing that traders you can do. Okay, if a trade goes into profit, goes into drawdown, and then comes right back down, right to break even, if you don't like the trade and it's a break even, then just maybe close it and reevaluate. You never made any money, you never lost any money, maybe you save yourself a headache, um, but you can maybe just scratch the trade right there. You tried and maybe just regroup and then look for another one. Okay, that, that's what you can do as a trader too. You don't need to always wait for your stop to get hit or your take profit to get hit. Like right now, I'm at a break even on this trade. I can close this trade right now if I like and walk away from it. But I'm still keeping it open. It's an ignited bar candle coming down. I want to see this hour. Can they push it down and really take out this? Because if they can take out this, I could see a further drop coming in the market. Okay. And then guys, uh, we'll stay with this for five more minutes and then we're going to have to move over to US 30 and um, NASDAQ. We've already done an analysis on US 30, but I'm gonna, we're going to continue with a top down on NASDAQ and then we'll watch those two indices going into Wall Street. <coughs> You see how these markets are really, really just attracted right at this VWAP? This is where most of the transactions want to range. 
um, in here. And for some of you guys that trade gold, gold does trade like this. So you got to get used to this type of price action. If you are scalping gold, if you're trading gold, this is how it tends to move. You know, so you got to be familiar with the security you're trading. That you're not. So I'm not surprised the way how gold is moving right now. Um, like this is sometimes how it can trade. So you just got to be prepared for how the security trades. Okay, so someone is asking, Ron, why is CVD minus 1500 and it's not really selling down? That's a, that's a good question. Um, it could just be this is accumulation to be re redistributed at another time. Okay, so unfortunately, they're not redistributing it right now. Maybe this volume might be redistributed at Wall Street. Maybe they're accumulating. These are big banks, guys. These are not like you and I, like small retail traders. These are big institutions, these are corporations, these are market makers that are accumulating large positions that they will redistribute this volume at a later time in the day. So, um, yeah, I understand, like, how did it not drop more than 15, 20 pips with all of this negative accumulation? It's because maybe they're absorbing for another opportunity to, to drop the market. Yeah, for possibly FOMC, you know, like tomorrow, FOMC 2 p.m. could be accumulating positions, large, large, large positions to redistribute a lot of that volume um, with FOMC tomorrow. Emmanuel, I, 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 I hear that. I feel that. Emmanuel says he got better as a trader when he concedes to losing the trade prior to taking it. Keeps him sane during the trade. I understand. That's why every time I take a trade, Emmanuel, I've already calculated in my head how much I'm willing to risk on this trade with the lot size and the stop loss. So if I'm risking, let's say, $50 on it, I've already calculated in that head that I've maybe lost $50 on this trade. Um, and if I'm okay with it, like it's not going to affect me financially, then I'm okay to allow the trade to play out without panicking. That's how everybody should be trading. Don't just go into a trade and just trade any lot size and you have no idea what you're doing. Then you see you're in minus 100, minus 200, minus $300 and then you're panicking. That's not trading. That's, you're gambling, guys. That's gambling. You have to know what you're doing as a trader. You have to vision the trade before you even take it, even profit-wise. Like, I'm already, like, visually looking at where to take my profit. I was looking more for this block down in here. Had, could I have taken out there? Yes, I could have. But uh, my, my target was more to push down in here. Emmanuel, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, when you guys do realize that, maybe that will um, help you guys become better traders, knowing what are going to be your outcomes before you even take the trade. Then if you're okay with it, then then take the trade. If you're not okay with it, then do, do not take the trade. Okay, so we're pushing down again. I can come down for a third time in profit again. You know, maybe third time is the charm. What do we do, guys? Do we take out now or do we let this thing run? I'm going to let it run because now it might be continuing to come down with bigger volume. It, could it pull back on me again? Yes, it quite could. It, uh, it could, 100%. But the whole reason I didn't close the trade in here is because I want to get the bigger move. But if you're, if you're, I know some of you guys are getting frustrated and maybe you just want to close it out. That's up to you guys. But I've already calculated my risk in the trade. I'm good with it. Um, I'm going to try and see if it can break this block. Look at how many attempts it's coming down here again, testing it one more time. Okay, and now you can see the heat below this area, okay? 
So there is bids now starting to accumulate. Close it. <laughs> okay, what time we got? Nine oh seven. Okay, guys, are you guys ready if I um, if we move to um, looking at indices? <clears throat> Craig, another 12 pips? You're on fire today? Good, amazing. Yeah, you're just pipping and dipping in here. Yeah. Okay, guys, so we'll just close out this candle. Two more minutes. It's at a very, very critical area. And then we're going to move over to, we've already done our top-down analysis on US 30. We'll just kind of clean it up, and then we'll do a full top-down on NASDAQ, and then we'll get ready for Wall Street Market Open. <clears throat> I'll try and get it done in 10 minutes, so that if anyone needs to take a break, grab a coffee, go to the washroom, we can all do that right before Wall Street. But we're pushing back down, guys, okay? Now, like after, this is another risk management. You can now go to a break even if you like so that you don't need to go back into drawdown. That's completely up to you and personal decision. Um, but it could, if you go to a break even early, it could come right back up and tap you out. So, but if you've been tired of being in drawdown, now what you can do is bring your stop loss down to a break even, then you have a risk free trade. Um, I'm still leaving it open with my stop loss. I'm still looking for this volume to close below here. But you see how, look at how they're protecting this area. They've been doing it all day since, look over here, since 5 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Right over here, 5.45, 6 a.m. Right over here, uh, right before 8 a.m. So it's look at how they're protecting this area not allowing it to really break right here yeah thank you Larry guys if you guys can hit the like button there's almost 400 of us on YouTube we really 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 do appreciate you guys if you guys are learning anything if you guys are learning if you've learned anything new today um, if you're getting better at analyzing the depth of market order book anything guys um, if you like what we do at SST Give us a like. We do appreciate it. Um, it helps the channel grow, guys. That's all we ask in return from YouTube. Okay, so now going through the motions again. See how the body, we came down, we closed right at the green box, we opened right at the green box, coming back up. Now, what I do is 50% of that red candle. I put the, the red line there. Is it going to hold below the red line? It's pulling right back up. Can we hold at least 50% of this bearish momentum to continue to maybe try and break this critical area right here? If it doesn't, then the buyers are going to bring it again right back up and test this area. Okay, And this is where it's forming now a double bottom. This is where now we have one bottom. There's our neckline up there. Coming back down, here's our double bottom. Now it could come back up and push, close above here, and rotate back down. But then the bids come in and then take gold up for the push for the continued high of the day. That's one possible path. So this is why it's at a very, sorry, I didn't want to get rid of that. It's at a very, very critical area here. If sellers can hold it, and this is the, going to be the make or break area today for gold. The, the right exactly where we're trading right now this will determine if buyers can hold this then we might have a bullish day today if sellers can break this down then we might have gold selling down today so this area is very 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 critical okay so I'm just gonna move over guys um, if you guys are okay with that please if you can monitor your trading okay um, and I'm going to do now, we're going to switch over to NASDAQ and US 30, guys, because it's um, we only have about less than 20 minutes before Wall Street. Please, guys, if you can, monitor your own trading, okay? <clears throat> Uh, 
and I'm going to have to switch the, the book off of, uh, we're going to take it off of gold. Um, we're going to look at indices, okay? So let's do US 30. Okay, this was US 30. We already plotted it, and we're going to do it with NASDAQ. Okay, so I'll do a full top down on NASDAQ in just a second, but I just want to reiterate what we did here. Okay, so remember this was purple high of the day. It was consolidating in here. 8.15, here we had the new 8.30, 8.30 news. Okay, remember our white line, 34,635. That was our hourly support on US 30. And there's the body right ignited below. You could have even taken 8.40. Sell, stop loss maybe above there, and run this down. Did it come pull back up 50% below the red candle? Yes, and continue to push down. Pull back again, 50% of the red candle. You could still be holding the trade, but we could get a pullback back up to here. But that was a nice selling opportunity right there. See how we broke this hourly structure? It's kind of like a head and shoulder pattern, left shoulder, the head up here at the high of the day, the right shoulder that completed and then dropped with 830 news. Some of you guys got that sell on US 30. Congratulations, guys really really nice and then you have like a death cross where the nine cross the 200 right over here for additional confluence okay so I'm gonna do NASDAQ now top-down analysis guys what do you want book map on guys in zoom what do you want book map on do you guys want me to keep it on gold do you guys want um, Dow SMP uh, okay, Dow. I see all of you guys are Dow. Okay, no problems. Okay, so we have it 15 minute slices. Okay, here you can see 8.15, 8.30, 8.45, 9 a.m., 9.15. Okay, so that is what we have for our book on Dow. Do we see any big orders right here we see some heat 34,910 83 and big heat down here at 34,850 showing big 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 bids in here gold guys is pushing down okay so let's see again if we can get the closure below here sorry I didn't um, and then just go through the motions red right here and if we can continue to target down into 1933 down in here there we go. There's a nice little push down. Ignited bar come down. Okay, that's 20 pips now for gold. I'm going to go to a break even now on gold. Up 20 pips. Sorry. Now I'm going to break even on gold. Okay. So guys, just heads up if, if before we do the indices. I know some of you guys were in gold sell. Okay. If you were holding with me, okay, 20 pips. I'm going to a break even right now. I'm going to a break even. Okay, and then uh, now I have risk-free trade. Okay, so let's go back to our indices. Congratulations, guys, for you guys. You guys were the ones that said, run, let's sell gold. So congrats to you guys. I listen to you guys and your bias. Um, it was it was a little bit choppy okay it got it got that's that's trading guys you know just try and go with your analysis don't over leverage and just go with the with the trade it trade that you your targets okay it finally came down <laughs> after um, after an hour okay um, but let's look at Nasdaq okay so just following up on Nasdaq we had this bullish move okay August coming up to here this area similar to US 30 we got rejected here come back down then start barcoding green red green red big bar on Friday red selling day on Friday to close the week then we have yesterday where it came down back up close right here inside bar and today we opened side by side okay so we opened right here close open we opened up and we came up to the high of the day right there. 15,250 approximately is our high of the day for NASDAQ. Um, again, what am I going to do with the big bar on Friday? I'm going to locate 50% of it. 
okay, right here. That's about half of it, right at that body as well. And I'm going to place a red box, just in case there's daily pullbacks. Maybe if it pulls back this week, maybe it might come into here and then continue to push down. So I want to identify this zone and bring it across for NASDAQ. 50% of Friday's big bearish volume, okay? And what do we have today? We opened up. It's a lower high from yesterday and continuing to push down. So we took out the close and open of yesterday. I'm going to place a yellow line here. This is a critical area because we might be trading at this area today. It might come back up here. So I'm going to place a yellow line. We're continuing to push down. Very bearish right now. There's yesterday's fresh low. Can we take out yesterday's low with Wall Street volume today? Let's see if we can. Okay, it's right there. If we can take it out, not only are we taking out yesterday, but we're going to take out uh, Thursday, September 7 low. And then if we continue to push down today, this is a good area. Body to body and a wick and other bodies. This is where a lot of trading took place. Critical volume was trading right here. 15,000, 060, 050 area. And continuing to push down. Down into where I find those gaps. Okay, here they closed it on Friday. They gapped it up on Monday. There's a gap right there. Okay, so what I do there is I like to place like a green box to show where they gapped up the market. I didn't gap up the market. The market makers gapped up the market there. So there was a lot of anticipation to push this big bullish move. And if it ever does come back to retrace down in here, maybe that's where the buyers are waiting to take it right back up. Okay, so we're not there yet, far away, but could be moving down. If we look at the overall move on NASDAQ, we got an M pattern. It came up. Let me use arrows. Yeah, guys, I hope you guys um, scaled out of gold. Okay. Okay, just to show you guys. Okay, it dropped all the way down, down into here, 1933. That was target. Okay, if you don't do anything down there, the 200 EMA, then it's popping right back up. So hopefully, guys, you know, that was 25 pip target for some of you guys um, down there to get out. Okay, and then on the daily for, for uh, NASDAQ over here, M top, okay, so we have the one top right up there. Here's our neckline. The purple line is our neckline. We came back up Friday, big push down, completing the M. Now we pulled back yesterday and today we're coming down so let's see are we going to have big bearish volume pushing down down into here this week going into fomc tomorrow as well okay maybe we have a bearish day so we have a big strong bearish daily candle pushing down let's go to the hourly now where did we start to get a lot of this momentum look at it breaking down guys dow is breaking down okay so we push down right over here 9 a.m. yesterday, sorry, Friday, push down, come down into here, Monday, okay, 7, 8, 9 a.m., come right back up, just trading sideways in here, again, London, London was the big bullish move for, we sell with gold, we sell with US 30, we sell with NASDAQ today, London was bullish, came up, but could not break above here, and now we're slowly coming down, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., look at here, this is our hourly pivot right here. See this area, this yellow line? Look at our previously hourly pivot right here. The dates, September 7, right over here, Monday. Okay, so if I bring this, that's gonna be our hourly pivot, this green box today. Can we break down here today? If we do, we're gonna have a nice drop on NASDAQ, okay? So this, just like gold, you know that big green box that we were trying to break? That's what we're looking to break on uh, NASDAQ today, okay? So guys, if you put like an alert here, this area, this is our hourly pivot right here. You can see September 7 at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. That's where Wall Street took the move up. We came right back down here yesterday, 9 a.m., Wall Street pushed it right back up. We're coming right back down to this pivot for Wall Street today. Is the, the, Are they going to bring it right back up and then push it right back down? Or they're going to bring it down with momentum and start to push it down. So this is a critical area, guys. You see how everything is strategically, like, happens for a reason at a specific time in the markets? It's not by chance that it comes down here always at the same time every day. Okay, so this is now <clears throat> five minutes. Okay, so what I like to look at is zones. I like zones. 
Okay, like over here, this is a zone. Okay, here, let's all agree, is this resistance right here? That started that double bottom. Okay, real quick, guys. Was this not resistance where it came up, pushed right back down, and then broke resistance, and then we pop? So right there is resistance, it's a zone. If I bring it across, that resistance turns into support right there. That's where it held. Then if we bring it across, it turns back into resistance. If I bring it across now into today, that's going to be my resistance point going forward. I'm going to bring this, in case there's any pullbacks today, into there, 15,200 to 10. Right now we're below the daily, okay? So it is pushing down. Where's other areas? Right here. Look at over here. This area right here, okay? See here where they held the market? Where it held right there? Bringing this across right now, okay? And making it green. So they're kind of lifting it right before the bigger block down in here. Okay, so this is a critical daily area. Right here also, five minute level. Right here, previous low. I'm going to trap this entire area right here, going into Wall Street, and we'll watch what happens. Okay, so we can clearly see that they are pushing the market down bearish. Okay, just this trend is pushing down. Let's add some EMAs. Nine, okay, we're below the nine EMA. We're below the 200 RSI okay it's com it was really really just oversold right now where it hit 20 and now we're coming right back up so let's not just take trades because RSI is oversold because what they could do is now they bounced it down they're bringing it right back up we're about five minutes away from Wall Street they could you know bring it right back down break here into the big green block and maybe pick up liquidity in there and then maybe it's pushing and then we start moving bullish that is one possible path okay remember we did this with gold okay do you guys understand that path okay if you don't tell me right now so we can really talk about this quickly because we got five minutes for market open that's a possible direction today guys okay remember we located this bigger green demand box below us okay we're oversold on the five minutes that's where they just dropped it, and then they're bringing it right back up. But if they fake out the market Wall Street, and then they go back down, they could come down in here because there could be big bids waiting to load up right here. And when they load up here, then maybe they're going to push it to break, retest this, and then might be a, a like a head and sh inverted head and shoulder pattern. That's one possible path. Okay, I could be that could be completely void and wrong. It could continue where they bring it down like this pull it back in Wall Street market open and then they're shooting it back down in here but it comes in here pulls back but then huge offers come in and then it's bearish and then it continues to drop with lower lows and lower highs so this is where you and I have to be patient disciplined gotta watch what's going on you know some some traders want to scalp the opens of the markets and I understand um, but guys the you got to pick your time frame what you're trading and be comfortable with it. Some of uh, some traders trade the one minutes right away. If there's a 20, 30 pip green candle, they're in and they're out because it could come right back down. Remember the range is gonna open up a lot, okay? So let's just put these two side by side. We got NASDAQ over here to the right. Um, same thing with US 30, okay? It's dropping right into the bigger green box. I'm gonna trap this area right below the white line. That's my hourly. Okay, right there so we trap it this used to be the low of the day remember remember this purple line so we're below are they going to come down in wall street pick up liquidity and break it right back out or are we going to continue selling off today okay so we've got us 30 over here to the left and we've got nasdaq to the right guys i'll share these charts with you guys in zoom and we'll get ready for market open did everyone at least maybe grab some profit out of gold? There is a link in, in the trading view, um, guys. I scaled out with 20, 23 pips on that one, on gold. So that's why, guys, it's important to 
identify and determine the bigger blocks in the market. Whether you're using just TradingView, like you do not need Bookmap. Okay, let me just make this clear to everybody. You don't need Bookmap to identify what we just did, the top-down analysis. Okay, so when you identify your higher time frame level blocks in the market and you're trading into those, you have to be aware that um, the market could trade right into it and reverse in that location. So um, you've got to have targets, guys. You've got to have targets. Okay, so we're two minutes away from Wall Street Market Open. You get, we're on Dow, okay? So you can see 34,900, there's 34 offers, 69, we're below the VWAP. Here we have some bids, minus 687 sell side um, transactions on volume. Moving opposite direction, NASDAQ is moving bearish, while maybe US 30 is moving bullish. These are not the same securities, not the same indices, guys, okay? So let's just get that out there, okay? NASDAQ is tech related, this moves with tech. US 30 is a basket case of other securities, not just tech. So you got to understand, you got to choose one, which one you're comfortable trading, know why you're trading it, what it consists of, because it goes a little further than just trading green and red candles when you're trading indices. You want to know what these are comprised of. Sherry, congratulations up 2% today. Perfect. And I think you got 1% yesterday. What a start to the week. That's amazing. Okay, guys, so we're 60 seconds away from market open. We can see that they're pushing it up. Could be push up, come back down. You know, many things. It could just, it could be an ignited bar and just break out of here. So have rules too, guys. Are you going to trade right at market open? Are you going to wait for the first five minute candle to close? Some traders wait for the first 15 minute bar to close. And some traders wait till 10 a.m., but they just speculate and watch what happens at Wall Street market open. Okay, so just be prepared. If you're going to trade, what I recommend is a lower, lower, lower lot size because you're going to have to have a bigger stop loss. You're going to see the volume is going to increase. US 30 can turn into 30, 40, 50 pip candles. Um, so if you're trading with a tight stop loss of 10, 20 pips, you're probably going to be stopped out because the range is so wide. Spreads, slippage, everything, guys. You have to factor these things in. Okay. So look at what they did. They just faked out to the high. They're bringing it back down. They're probably coming down to grab the liquidity. Here it comes down. Okay. Look at it coming down. Let's see if they pick it up. Picked it up. Beautiful. It's probably going to break out now. Okay. So let's see. It's still in the box. But did you see how they came down? They picked up right there. They grabbed those bids. Let's see now if they break it out. It's still in this box, still ranging. NASDAQ pushing down. Remain patient. If you haven't traded anything or taken anything, okay, you haven't missed out on anything right now. Just relax. But I want you guys to learn. Did you see how they faked out the high? They brought it down right into here, into the big green box, picked up the liquidity, now coming up with the liquidity to probably break it out of here. But it's not happening. It's getting rejected. So there's strong resistance at this hourly for the Dow right now. Okay, so it's still building, it's still building. They might bring it right back down to tap into here again. Okay, so we got rejected, lower high, no volume pushing. Maybe it's going to sell, come back down. Okay, this is where it's accumulating, guys. It's the first minute of Wall Street market open. You can't make a, a directional move of where it's going to move in the first minute. Okay, NASDAQ is dropping. NASDAQ is continuing to drop right into the green box. So that's why trade with the market, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. We've got lots of indecision on Dow right now. Okay, again, did NASDAQ come into the bigger green box to grab liquidity and come turn right back up? Okay, so even if you're scalping, guys, if you're scalping and you were in a cell in there and you went up 10, 15, 20 pips, you got to make a decision because it's a big green box. Now we're breaking out. So they grabbed the liquidity and now it's punching out of here. And now NASDAQ might reverse too into 
potential buy. If you're still waiting on this bar, let's see where it closes. But some of you guys I know are scalping. Some of you guys are in. Others are waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this bar to close. Okay, but did you guys understand how the market, Wall Street, they used that that momentum to come in here to pick up the bids? Okay. Where was extremely oversold on the lower time frames, but it came into the bigger block. Now it's coming back in again. So maybe today is going to be a bearish day, like continuing to push it down in here. Again, I'm not going to make an assumption in the first couple minutes. I'm waiting. And you can see how if you're trading this, it can be very stressful. It can be very stressful. If this is not your cup of tea, don't trade this. Now we're building. It's building maybe in a bullish pin bar. Where will it close? Can it close above in here? Where will US 30 close? That's that hourly white line, that resistance line. Can the five minute volume close above there? And guys, tomorrow uh, in Zoom, we'll have our private Zoom for um, live FOMC at 1 o'clock tomorrow, 1 to 3 o'clock. Okay, so we've got now 50 seconds, 45 seconds. This is just the first five minutes of market open all over the place. Okay, we came down up back in here nasdaq came all the way down into here came up as a bullish pin bar now it's coming right back down there's no direction in the markets yet guys so just patience okay it's, it's a rough market open right now is anybody in a trade right now um, I, I like to ask you guys, is anybody speculating with anything right now? Testing anything out? Okay, NASDAQ is flipping. Let's see how it closes. Okay, still a little bit bearish. Open. Wow. Okay, see the manipulation. We closed up here and then they just shoot it down. Okay, so that happens, guys. You know, when you're trading market opens. But now we got three wicks picking up. See how quickly they shot it down and now coming right back up. So if we can start to maybe break out bullish above here and above here might be potential areas to buy but I'm still waiting it's still in the box here still in the box that's why I trap it it's still in this box I'll put like a red I'll put a red zone above us just to for the visual traders to know that there it's red up there we're not looking until something happens above there same with Nasdaq not looking to counter anything unless something happens above that red box up there. Otherwise, today might be just continue to sell down today. Maybe it might be continue lower lows, lower highs today. But just nothing yet. <laughs> like, I don't know, guys. Uh, I'm just saying myself personally, I don't see any direction yet. I, I Like, for me to take a trade right now, I just don't see anything. <clears throat> okay, but let's let it accumulate. Let's let's why don't we let Wall Street accumulate? and then figure out the move and maybe we can try and follow them the rest of the day. If there's no trade right now, there could be a trade later at 10 o'clock, maybe at 10.30, 11. But just continue to watch what they're doing. If you're not in a trade, don't take your eyes off of the price. Continue to watch what they're doing. Get any clues what they're doing. Okay, we've got a higher low here. We had sellers push it down here. 
but every time we came down, the bids were wanting to transact up here. So that's showing strength up here. So is the market going to come back and transact up here? We're still below the VWAP. The market is starting to get balanced out, the CVD. Unbelievable NASDAQ um, sell signal um, from the SST scalper for over 80 pips, guys. Um, it was kind of when we were looking at the gold, but um, excellent. For some of you guys in the group that took that, Sherry, yeah, really, really nice, guys. I'll show you guys that that, that setup in, um, in just a little bit. Let's just follow, continue, watch what's going on right here. Guys, gold is dropping. Okay, gold. I see some of you guys are still holding your gold shorts, Eric. Nice. Yeah, gold is dropping 19, breaking 1933. So if you guys that are still holding, congrats. Good job. A Agent Smith, you're holding it too. Bone Vela, but for you guys, it's it's rewarding you guys for holding. Good job. What is CBD? CBD is, uh, no, CVD, or V, volume. <laughs> uh, CVD is something different. CVD, cumulative volume delta. It's it's the net transactions. So it's our, our offers um, transacting with the bids over here, and then it kind of gives us a, 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 a indication of what these transactions are. Because when we just see offers and bids, we have no idea if these are sell limits, sell stops, buy stops, buy limits. So with this indicator, it kind of gives us a little more information that the transactions are leaning towards more sell side. So that's that's why like I, I stayed with gold on my sell because we had CVD was minus 500, minus 1000, minus 1500. And then that's why now like it's starting to drop a little bit. So it's not the, the, it's not the most amazing indicator, but it just helps to understand the, the depth of market and the um, a little bit better. Hopefully I, I um, explained it properly to you, Art, um, but yeah. And then here, Art, zero is balanced. That's when the market is balanced, that's zero. Then that's kind of like when we're close to the VWAP, the market is balanced. Then it's anybody. Then that's where the market is trading kind of choppy sideways. And then we determine who is going to take over. Will it be the buyers above uh, zero? Will it be the seller transactions below? Okay, guys, but like look at our market open. Okay, so even there's nothing on US 30 Okay, for the first 10 minutes. No direction. Same with Na NASDAQ was a big move right off the sell, right off the came down, holding, coming right back down. Um, no real direction right now for Wall Street. You can see how clustered the volume is. It's still accumulating. Maybe after the call, maybe 10 a.m., maybe like 11, guys. There might be much better setups. You don't need to stress yourself out and trade this type of volume if it's not there, okay? Just understand, be patient, be disciplined, recognize what type of market you're trading. <clears throat> okay, it's part of our job as a trader to recognize the market right now. What do we see? Like, is this something that is ideal, appealing to trade right now? Probably not the best. So tell yourself, maybe in an hour, two hours from now, the volume might be much better to trade. You might have much better opportunities to, to make some profitable trades than trade this garbage right now. Till we start to see something. Now NASDAQ is building, coming right back up. Can it close above this area here? NASDAQ is pushing up nicely now. Maybe US 30 is coming one more time into here to grab some liquidity. Here it is. Okay, are they gonna grab the liquidity and spike, get a wick and come right back up? NASDAQ is moving forward with bullish momentum. This bar is going to close in three minutes. Then we have a new 15-minute candle. So then our 15-minute traders who are looking at the 15s, like this is what we have on 15 on Dow. It came up, that initial break at the market open and drop. 
we've got the opposite going on with NASDAQ where it dropped bearish and coming right back up bullish. So if you're a 15 minute trader, watch your 15 minute bars as well. Okay, I'm going to stick with the fives over here and continue watching what's happening. Bookmap is is free if you use if you practice with Bitcoin. Um, they have a free um, version you can download for Bitcoin, but any of the other securities you have to subscribe to Rhythmic Data, and it is a paid service. But to practice, you can practice for free with Bitcoin. Download their software and practice with it. Mother Russia, welcome. You told us all to buy once the market opens. Okay, but um, on which security? Because the market opened right here. Okay, NASDAQ, if you're talking, if we bought NASDAQ right at market open, I would have been in 30 pips of drawdown um, if I bought market open. So maybe it's not the greatest to have bought market open. If you bought market open right here on US 30, you're in drawdown unless you scaled out for 10 pips. Um, I don't know. That's why it's tough to, to, to gamble on which way the market is going to open. Oh, did it freeze? Sorry, guys. One thing. Guys, I think my uh, froze over here on my side. Guys, I think my NASDAQ chart froze over here. Um, that sucks. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Sorry guys, trading view. Oh, my NASDAQ charts are frozen. Ah, uh, that sucks. We'll go full screen, uh, US 30 is moving. Okay, here we go on US 30. Now we're building. Okay, new 15 minute bar, building now. Yours is frozen as well. Guys, I think uh, um, TradingView froze. Sorry guys. I'm just gonna move over to US 30 because it's moving. Yeah, sometimes we can't control um, TradingView, sometimes it glitches. Which ones? A cap capital com is working. Okay, Lisa, let me try that one. Which ones? Is there any other ones? Uh, Try Black Bull. Some of you guys use Black Bull. Okay, we got Black Bull. Okay, but I don't have my analysis on it, guys. I'm sorry.
Okay, so it came up, got rejected, came up again, got rejected. So, um, guys, it's just, in, I'm just, it's really, really choppy, the market opens right now. Um, guys, I would, I would, let's just see what's going on with Dow over here, okay? So we did come down into the box, pick up the liquidity. They did take out the highs, okay? So in here still, came back down, higher low. We got a bullish engulfing candle. Coming back up, going to close in two and a half minutes. Can the buyers on Dow close it above here? And maybe we retest this area. And maybe we may have momentum to push up there. But if they cannot close above this red box, then it might have potential to sellers push it right back down in here. And again, trade sideways in here. NASDAQ has two nasty rejections right here. Um, we're trade. Look at here. So, so CVD now is balanced. Okay, so it came all the way down. We're right back to the balancing. We're right back to the VWAP. This is where it could get now big accumulation. So if you're not in a trade right now, I wouldn't advise to just jump in right now because now you're going to have the markets start to do their accumulation again. Um, so this was a really really choppy um, market open. It wasn't. It wasn't easy. Um, there wasn't even too many trades to take. Like I do not see any direction. It's just if you got in and out, if you pipped and dipped, yeah, that's that's the only way to escape this market. If you haven't taken a trade, don't worry. Like just look at it now. What 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 would you have traded? Okay, always review, look back, so you don't feel like you missed out on something. I don't feel like we missed out on anything. Maybe we saved ourselves a headache. We can continue to be patient. Look, it, they drove it out of here, and then it's coming right back down. Is any volume closing above here? No. So it's just impulse moves. Guys, I think they're just trying to suck traders in, trying to suck some volume. They're going to continue to accumulate. I think today could be, maybe, if it doesn't open up later on, like around 11 a.m., it might be a choppy day going into FOMC tomorrow. So just knowing that and being prepared for it, um, just trade very, very smart until we have our FOMC tomorrow, and then uh, then we see how these markets move. Uh, Dave's on holidays this week. Dave's Dave's taking holidays this week. Nice, Aaron. One percent today on US thirty. Congrats, bro. Uh, yeah, one percent on today in US thirty, Aaron. Uh, like a situation like this, um, get your money and get out of these markets, and enjoy your day. Captain, you got one percent too. Beautiful guys, guys. I just want to tell you guys, one percent. Okay, don't, don't. It's not modest. One percent a day can be life changing. Okay, just stay disciplined. One percent can change your life. I'm telling you guys, half a percent can change your life. It's one percent more than you had when you woke up. Okay. Count your count your one percent and count your blessings every single day, guys. That's what I do. We don't need to make fifty percent a day. We don't need to make twenty percent a day. You can make one percent, half a percent per day, and literally change your life for the better. And it doesn't take too much hard work. It doesn't mean it doesn't. You don't have to put in eight hours a day in these markets. Like the, the cell right here. That was a beautiful cell setup. Guys, I'll show you guys on Discord. Um, okay, NASDAQ is breaking down now. Okay, so let's look at what NASDAQ is doing. It came up two times and got rejected with a big wick. It came up again, got rejected with a big wick. So they are still pushing it down, taking out the next wick. Again, when it comes down, it's probably going to find some bids and come right back up. So there's still no direction in the markets. Same with US 30. Came up two times up here, market open push down. It just came up again with volume, push down lower high. Close below and we're trading again in this box. So it is building. There could be some divergence forming, but I, I don't like to trade with divergence on market opens because it's not really a good uh, indication of what could happen. All I'm looking for is can green volume continue to close above this red box if it's making a higher low, a higher low and a higher low. Then I know that the bids are increasing, but I need confirmation of volume to close above here. And then I want to use this white line, this hourly resistance, to be like an ongoing support line and then building. And then maybe we're going to have 
bullish momentum for US 30 this afternoon or later this morning. Newton, nice bro. You made 50 bucks on a 193 cash account. That's huge, man. That's a big return. Good job, brother. Okay, guys, so the market is still in this trap box. You know, we've got to stay disciplined in there. Um, just to show you guys um, the, the sell signal set up for NASDAQ. You know, guys, if you guys want to use signals or trade ideas with us, um, it can help with your trading as well. Like, for example, if you were looking for maybe a sell on NASDAQ, and then we give a chart here to kind of help with the analysis. Um, right over here, like we're looking for below this area right here, okay, below the white line, 15,235. Yes, it was trading up into there, but we're watching this area in here. You can, it's a static zone, so you can watch this throughout the day. And then here around 9 a.m. is when it started to break. We were on gold at that time, but some of you guys caught that. And there's a drop for roughly 100 pips. And it broke here, the critical support. I could draw a line right here across and there was the break and the momentum push down that's what we were kind of looking for gold but every time it came down here it was bouncing right back up and couldn't break that area so um, there is signals guys that we do offer here as well to help with trading so if we don't get any volume closing above here bearish okay if we don't on nasdaq if we don't get anything today closing like above here here's our first resistance zone there's our two wicks that came impulsively up there and it's continuing to sell down. So this is where you trade with the momentum of the market. If you're just buying, they could be just pullback buys and you just got to kind of pip and dip. If we get no volume closing above there, then let's not look for buys. Abdel, you're, you're struggling with the how to take the signals. There's over 25 videos in the website under how to take the signals. Um, we've done, we broke them down. Um, so I suggest just watching a couple of those videos. But Abdel, the PDFs too. Make sure you're following up on the PDFs that we send out with the trade recaps and the PDFs breaking them down. We'll do, we'll, I'll do more webinars too, ongoing to kind of, but there is a lot of information out there already that you can get a good understanding of how to take them, how to trade them and things like that. But we'll do more, absolutely. But the PDFs are, are there and there's also 25 videos on the website specifically talking about breaking down the trade signals and ideas, okay? Um, but we'll do more, absolutely, okay? Good, good, um, good point, okay? PDFs are available on Discord? Yeah, um, in the Sniper Education. Um, also the PDFs on, on the Discord where, where, where you're getting the signals to from, um, updates regularly. Make sure you're, you're checking in on those because it will, it will help answer all of your questions if you're um, not sure about something. And the trade management guys, okay, too. When the signals are sent out, there's a trade management that's also sent out. Um, trying to the best of ability to understand what's going on with trade. It's not easy because the markets are moving, so but we try our best here. And if you have questions, then we will absolutely do dedicated webinars um, to, 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 to make sure you understand them better. Okay, we want everyone to understand them. It takes time, it's not, it's not, you're not gonna get it too. You're not gonna understand right away but uh, it takes time, guys. Just like learning how to trade, okay? To learning how to take our signals, same way. You gotta, you gotta learn, okay? If you get frustrated, it's just gonna, it, you're not gonna do well, okay? So take, take the time to learn. Okay, look at the markets pushing down now. So see, guys, we don't want buys, okay? No buys, no volume closed above there, no volume closed above, pushing back down, but we're coming back down into this deep demand box. So we got to see, is it coming down just to grab liquidity and come back up? 
if that's the case, then we're going to continue to consolidate. Um, NASDAQ is breaking down, so the markets are pushing down. It's a choppy open, okay? So what I recommend is um, look later into 10 30 11 a.m let the markets maybe continue to trade not and us 30 is not going to trade in this zone the entire day today okay so let's let's all just talk facts with each other it's not going to trade inside here all day okay it's going to maybe try an attempt to break out of this demand zone but it could just come down here to pick up liquidity and come back up and we could have maybe just accumulation and then all of a sudden it's a bullish breakout later on this afternoon so just what i recommend guys is maybe place an alert like up here or here at the purple line that was our previous low if we come back up here or place like an alert below the screen box and just watch what's happening this is at a critical area the bottom of the green box is 34,500 it's that psychological block in the market how many times have we broke below here like if you look back it just came dipped down in here Wednesday September 13 and back right back up came down in here uh, Monday 10 o'clock went right back up it's coming down today in here might go back up but it might actually push even lower now, okay? So I think today it could be a bearish day in the markets. You're getting ready for a big move of FOMC. That's, yeah, Joshua, I hear you, bro. Yep, so it could be accumulation, could be setting up for FOMC. Um, just trade smart, guys. Um, if the trade is not there, don't force anything. That's the worst that we can do is just force trades. Just because we're, we haven't taken a trade, you know, most traders, if we haven't taken a trade, I haven't taken a trade since 9.30 till now, 10 o'clock, 30 minutes. So does that mean that I just want to now just jump in the next candle just to say I'm trading? No, you got to look for the best high quality setup, okay? If you have to sit and wait for another 30 minutes or another hour, then that's, that's what your job as a trader is. You're going to have to wait. That's why use the alert system. If you have trading view, set some alerts. If you have that package, go grab a breakfast, go grab some coffee right now. Come back, look at the charts, maybe 30 minutes from one hour from now. Maybe we're all, you're going to see that all of a sudden the market came down in here a couple times, picked up all this liquidity. You come back in an hour, it's closing above here, retesting this, and all of a sudden it's a bullish day and it's nice big bullish breakouts and you're getting your daily goal. But don't get stressed out with this. This is the hardest part of trading, is this. Is learning the discipline to stay away from this and just wait. Yes, today could also be the rest of the day might trade like this. Then you have to understand that tomorrow's FOMC. Maybe the market is trading like this for a specific reason because of FOMC. Will it always trade like this? Is Wall Street always going to be like this every single day? No, it's not. Some days are... Like this big green candle could have closed above here, retested. We could have been buying the breakout and all of a sudden we're up 100 pips. That can happen, guys. But part of trading is identifying the markets and what is good to trade, what is not too good to trade, and what is maybe stay away. Right now, NASDAQ is continuing to break down. So the market is selling today. Selling. Okay, there was some liquidity grabs. Nothing happened with those and selling. So US 30 may follow, continue selling with the markets. <coughs> Do not be counter buying the markets unless you're looking for small counter pullbacks. Okay, because otherwise you might just be buying into supply and they're going to continue to push you down. Just like here, <coughs> you can see in the book now, here's big block. Big blocks, big blocks. They're lowering the blocks below the VWAP and the market is going to continue to push down bearish. Okay, so if you're buying, you're buying into big blocks of offers. So you have to be careful because this is, if you're buying, you're in big trouble. Okay, so the market is continuing to sell off. <clears throat> Guys, it's 10 a.m., okay? Um, that's it for me. So thank you guys so much for today. I appreciate everything. Um, if you guys can hit the like buttons on <clears throat> YouTube, uh, we do appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow morning again. And then, guys, um, also tomorrow we have two sessions with the live FOMC at 1 p.m. Eastern. So we have two sessions tomorrow. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate all of uh, the support, guys, and um, appreciate all the likes. And um, yeah, just trade safe today, guys. It wasn't the greatest market open, um, but just trade safe. Let's let's tr live to trade another day and see how tomorrow trades and the markets tomorrow morning, okay? And if you're trading today, continuing, just trade with the markets. If you're going to counter some moves, 
then maybe understands that it could just be countering um, pullbacks and things like that. But you see now 10 a.m., they're really bringing it down with the new hourly momentum. Okay, so um, really good, guys. Yeah, uh, um, NASDAQ is really breaking down. For you guys that took the signal, congratulations. Amazing, amazing, amazing job, guys. Okay, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. God bless everyone. Stay safe. Uh, count your blessings daily, guys, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all of you guys. Have a good day, everyone. No, uh, do it uh, FOMC private tomorrow, private, with the group tomorrow. We'll do we'll do Wall Street with YouTube and tomorrow's group uh, with all of us, okay? Yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Hey, guys, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another live session of Stocks Never Trading. My name is Dave, guys. My partner's Ron. Let's get down to business here, guys. In on US 30, sell, okay? I'm jumping in. That, guys, that's a 100 pip drop. It's, yes, we caught it. Hey, guys, 200 pips, please, secure. <laughs> Trading with a perfect broker is the key, which takes you one step ahead. At AFX, we have you covered. The future of Forex is zero commission. Here at AFX, we offer ultra low commission, which starts at 99 cents per lot. Our accounts spreads start from 0.0, .0 pips. With account leverage up to 500x, and can have a minimum deposit of $100, with an additional 100% deposit bonus, regulated by HEMC Greece, compliant with ESMA, EU, regulated with FSEA, South Africa. Nothing to lose, but something to gain. Trade with the world's most liquid market provider, AFX, recommended by Stock Sniper Trading. To get started use the affiliate link below. As a trader, we all look for tight or low spreads, which helps us to get in and out of the market. Using the right broker can help us try different strategies with multiple options of brokers on the web. Here at Stock Sniper Trading, we have a recommended broker that is Hanko Trade. With spreads as low as zero pips and leverage up to 500x, Hanko Trade is just one click away. With multiple account types to choose from, you also have a minimum deposit of $10. Using Hanko Trade's affiliate program, refer a friend and earn up to a 40% commission on trading volume. Built by traders, for traders. Hanko Trade.